Okay. Wait, just a second. Oh, but it's so hot. I'll open it back up. Um, all right, so yesterday we were talking about finding points that have a particular derivative um, value or a particular slope of, of the tangent line. Any questions on that process? Nah? Uh, so today we're going to talk about higher order derivatives. So in other words, like the derivative of the derivative, or the derivative of the derivative of the derivative, and so on, right? Um, so the words for this are first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, and so on. Uh, but there's notation that goes along with that as well. Like, uh, if I have the first derivative, I know that the notation for that is either like f prime of x or y prime or dy dx. Like all of those notations mean the derivative of the function, whatever that function is. If I have the second derivative, which is just the derivative of the derivative, the notation is just f double prime of x or y double prime. Now the notation for this is a little bit weird. Um, remember the symbol d dx is the derivative and the y is kind of like separate, right? So this is the derivative of y. So the notation for this is actually d squared y over dx squared. It's like you're squaring d dx second derivative. Does that make sense? So it's a little strange. Um, so the third derivative is a triple prime or y triple prime or d cubed y over dx cubed. Once you get to higher than that, um, it gets a little bit different. Um, sometimes, so if I wanted the fourth derivative, for example, some books will, will um, switch to Roman numerals, like they'll have like F and then like a little IV, which is like the Roman numeral four of X. Or some textbooks, instead of doing a Roman numeral, they'll put a num uh, an exponent in parentheses. Like they'll have like f and then with a four in parentheses. X. Okay. And then same thing with y. It would be like y fourth derivative or y fourth derivative. Okay. But the notation for dy dx is still the same. It's still going to be d to the fourth y over d x to the fourth. So that notation is consistent even if you get to like 18th derivative or something like that. Okay? Any questions on that? So what you actually do, like I said, is you just take the derivative of the derivative and that's all there is to it. So like for example, if I had something like um, y equals uh, 2x cubed plus 5 over x squared. Okay, I could rewrite this as powers. This would be 2x cubed plus 5x to the negative 2. And then I could just do this as many times as I wanted to. Like the first derivative, y prime, would be 6x squared minus 10x to the negative 3, which I could simplify if I wanted to. If, that's, if that was my end goal, I'd have to simplify it probably. 
y double prime, this would be 12x plus 30x to the negative 4. And so on. Like I could find as, as many of these derivatives as I want to. So the third derivative, this would be 12 minus 120 x to the negative fifth. Now, eventually, the polynomial part of it, which is the 2x cubed, that's just going to eventually get down to zero, and you're never going to have to write it again. Like the next one, I get the fourth derivative. If I use Roman numerals, this would be zero, which I don't really have to write, plus 120 times 5, which is 600 x to the negative 6. Like that's is. Now it's only one term, and it'll be one term for the rest of all time if I wanted to find every other derivative. If it was just a polynomial, eventually it would be zero from a certain point on. It'd be zero, 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 go away. Okay? That's really good. So, like, uh, let's just do like a more complex one. Like, they'll give you like strange ones. Like, for example, what if they give you one like. Um, I mean, when I say strange, just like using fractions and stuff like that, like if they had like, uh, I got this one off the Delta Mac, um, negative 1 20th x to the 6th minus 1 6th x uh, squared plus 3 16th x minus uh, 1 over x cubed. So in the direction it said find f triple prime. Find f triple prime, the third derivative of f of x. So you just go through the normal process three times. So f prime of x, this would be uh, negative 6 twentieths, which is negative 3 tenths, x to the fifth. And then this is 2 six, which is 1 third, negative 1 third x plus 3 sixteenths, and then this term right here is really minus x to the negative 3, so it's going to be plus 3x to the negative 4. And then you just keep going, like the second derivative, uh, this would be 15 tenths, which is 3 halves, negative 3 halves, x to the fourth, minus 1 third, this whole thing is just going to go to 0. I don't have to write that though. Uh, minus 12x to the negative 5. And then the third derivative, which is what I'm trying to find, this would be 12 halves, which is negative 6x cubed. That's just going to be 0 plus 60x to the negative 6. So the final answer that you'd enter into delta math would be negative 6x cubed plus 60 over x to the sixth. That's the answer. So it's not really hard. You're just doing the same thing that we've been doing twice, or three times, or four times, or however many times they want you to. So if you were like showing work for this, which I mean, we don't really have to indulge in that, and you could like recognize that the second and third term there would just like not make it Eventually all the way, you just, like, you just like ignore those? Like, just yeah, I guess. Just I would be a little cautious, like, you know, that you don't. Count <laughs> like maybe it's a cube, and they're asking you for the the third derivative. Like the cube wouldn't get to zero. Right, right. Third, it would have to so be less. Yeah. yeah, so you just have to be careful about that. But yeah, I mean, eventually, it's just gonna just go away. So you can just anticipate that. Just be careful. Like like I said, just that you're not miscounting it. Any questions? Nope. That's it. <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't really know how to say this. I could do more in a day, like if you guys want me to. But I, I honestly, I'm just kind of slow playing it because there's really, you know, like there's not a lot of pressure. There's no regents exam or anything. I feel like we've covered plenty of material in this class. All right, so, all right, I just don't want you guys to think that I'm like lazy. Well, I'm actually bored up here. Like I'm just saying, I have everything done for the whole year, and I'm literally just sitting here, just like. <laughs> Scrolling through like YouTube videos, <laughs> like, <laughs> doing nothing. Honestly, it sounds like a great job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we could play more board games. So. Well, tomorrow's free day. So yeah, exactly. Like yeah. I'm gonna open this window. Yeah. 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 Yeah.